Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and in today's video I'm talking about INFP T personality type and why INFP T personality types actually don't really exist. Perhaps you took the 16 personalities test or perhaps you watched my video on the INFP A versus INFP T personality type. If you did, I apologize, I spoke incorrectly and I didn't properly understand the subject that I was talking about. So. The 16 personalities launched the idea of A versus T personnel types, arguing that some people are more confident and assertive and more outspoken, while some people are more turbulent, neurotic, and prone to doubt. What I'd like to argue is that this is actually a false dichotomy. What I've learned over time is that actually there is a value towards being turbulent and we're not really understanding this trait. We're speaking very negatively about the turbulent type without understanding the positive qualities that it's supposed to offer. And while certainly there is a room for critical thinking and for self-perspective and for analysis on this trait, and while certainly we can discuss negative tendencies within these personality types and variations, I think personality psychology, the Jungian version of personality psychology, is supposed to be about healthy variations in differences in people's behavior, meaning that these traits are supposed to be healthy and positive things not uh, the result of trauma or negative experiences. And that's the case in this situation. We become naturally more turbulent when we experience bad situations, traumas and negative experiences. This is a natural thing that can happen to anyone in their life. We can all fall in the grip of negative emotion and turbulence and neuroticism if we have and experience bad situations or if we're going through a difficult time or a stressful situation. And that is a normal part of being a human. I believe that the idea of assertive and turbulent types are a false dichotomy because I found that there are plenty of examples of leaders in the world that were high in assertiveness but also high in neuroticism. What we can see is that many people like, for example, Adolf Hitler were known for sure being very outspoken, very direct, very aggressive, but also highly prone to mood swings, temper tantrums, and to neurotic outbursts and irrationality. This was not a rational person. It was not a, a person that was necessarily less neurotic. The idea of assertive and turbulent personality types is built on the idea of emotional stability versus neuroticism in the big five ocean model, right? So this is a scientifically researched dichotomy, but it doesn't actually make the claim that people that are emotionally stable are necessarily assertive. In fact, you can be very modest like the Dalai Lama or the Buddha, but at the same time you can be relatively meek, modest and humble and still very emotionally stable. So people can have this tendency towards being humble and service oriented and focused on the outer world and on aligning themselves with a bigger cause or something important to them. And people can be prepared to compromise their own needs and to hold back their own judgment and their own voice to keep an open mind and to learn and to listen from, to what other people are saying, right? So that's what I think is happening here. The INFP-T personnel type doesn't exist, but INFP-M does exist, and the INFP-A does exist. There can certainly be INFPs out there that are more assertive, more confident, more outspoken, better at uh, pushing for what they believe in, better at standing up for uh, their ethical worldview, better at like going out and exploring their ideas in the outside world and applying their ideas and inspiration creatively in a more direct fashion. And certainly that's a good thing to be. Certainly being confident is very positive when you want to take initiative to meet your match or to connect with somebody and anyone that wants can learn to develop these traits when they need it. That means if you want to become more assertive, it is possible it's not easy, but it's possible to modify and improve and build these traits in yourself. Personality is like a piano, meaning that you can learn to play on any note and you can learn to adjust how you play and when you play and how you relate to the music in itself. Personality is not just our genetic background or genetic inclination. While we certainly have that, we certainly might have an inclination to be more pessimistic or to be more laid back or so on or so forth. 
But personality is actually something <laughs> that we are constantly, continuously developing. Every experience that you have, everything that you go through, everything that happens to you in your life adds to your perspective and to your wisdom and to your learning experience. And it can, in, if you face it the right way, improve your conscious understanding of yourself and other people, helping you become more connected to yourself and to others around you. We can learn to be more assertive, but I would say most people today in today's world actually have to learn to be more modest. I find that we in today's culture are addicted to uh, assertive and confident individuals. We want to raise everyone to be successful, a leader, somebody uh, that stands out from the group. But in reality, why are we telling people this? Why are we uh, telling all our kids that they have to become successful, that they should become rich, that they should get promoted, that they should become a manager, that they should become a boss? When is there not a value to also being more service oriented, being more modest, being more humble, and being a better listener. At the worst, is there not a risk that we are creating a society in which we are raising a generation that all believes they are entitled to success, power and influence? When in reality, actually, we should be learning, teaching these kids how to cope with failure, how to learn from their mistakes, and how to keep an open mind to other people. If we want a world of peace, if we want to create harmony, if we want to find balance, shouldn't we be able to assess our own decisions and our own actions and to realize when we are wrong, are we not making a mistake here in pushing people to be too confident? So, to wrap up this message, I would like to talk about the positives of being an INFP-M. And I want to give a more fair picture of the INFP-M, or the modest variation of the INFP. When you are more modest, you're going to find that people naturally learn to open up more around you. People feel safe around you. People feel they can trust you. People feel they can talk to you because they know that you're going to reserve judgment, that you're going to listen, that you're going to hear them out. When people see that you're doing something wrong and when they w can see a better opportunity to help you, they know that you're a person that's going to listen to them and that's going to hear them out and is going to take them seriously. Is that not a good thing to be? Is that not something that we should praise in one another? To be a person that can say, hey, you know what? You're right. And that's a good point. And yeah, that's something that I should consider more in the future. Being modest means that uh, you learn to recognize that well, hey, that person might have something to tell me that I could benefit from knowing. That makes you more interested in the outside world and the people around you. It makes you more eager to hear other people's stories. It makes you more capable of relating to and connecting to other people. And so a person that is more modest, that learns to be modest in an emotionally stable and healthy way, such a person is capable of building stronger relationships. Your partner is gonna find you to be a beautiful and amazing listener. Your partner is gonna find you to be very appeasing and service oriented. Your partner is gonna find you to be a person that is uh, trustworthy and dependable and reliable, right? And is that not something we should all strive to be in the right situation? I say here that it's important to learn to do these things in a way that contributes to your general emotional stability. And so I want to end by discussing the relationship between modesty and neuroticism. It is possible that modest people are more inclined to be neurotic. I'm not sure that's the case though. Uh, but reasons for why a modest person might become more neurotic is perhaps that uh, they have uh, stopped listening to their own inner voice, right? So we all need to have and create space for ourselves to allow ourselves to have our own thoughts and our own experiences and our own feelings about the situation, right? So everyone needs to learn to take a step back and to listen to themselves. And even if they're wrong, even if you are wrong, and even if there's something you can learn from other people, other people too want to hear your perspective and want to hear your truth and want to know your feelings, right? So it's very important that you learn as 9 p to not keep your feelings to yourself, to not bottle up, to not internalize, but to learn to share and speak and connect with other people around you, right? Those that have followed my channel for a longer time know that I speak a lot about the flow code. And 
actually these days I like to call it the flex flow code. And the reason for this is because uh, it's ultimately important to know when to lead and when to follow. Because we need to equally be able to, uh, in a dance, be the person that leads in the dance, but also the person that when the other person wants to lead, can follow. And so it's important to learn to mix between these two states of being the driver, being the initiator, being the assertive person, and at other times learning to pull back, scale back, take a step uh, backwards so that the other person can take a step forward, right? Because perhaps you're pushing, pushing, pushing for something and getting nothing back. Well, perhaps it's because you're not creating a space for other people to come to you. And similarly, if you're constantly pulling and waiting for other people to come to you, hoping for a rescue or hoping for a champion, somebody that's going to push you out into the world, somebody that's going to be assertive and direct and tell you what to do, well, uh, Perhaps actually you're the kind of person that needs to learn to do that. So we need to learn to find a balance between these two traits in order to achieve a healthy sense of self. A sense of self that is versatile and dynamic, like a song that has both sad and positive and happy notes, right? We're the co-posters of our own life and we're all working towards harmony and balance and self-awareness. So learn to listen to yourself, but also learn to listen to other people. Learn to be both assertive and modest. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.